Okay, in this video we're going to look at uh, rhombuses, or rhombi if you will, and we're looking at the properties of rhombuses. So, all four sides of a rhombus are congruent, and that's what makes a rhombus a rhombus. Uh, so it's like a square, but a square has to have 90 degree corners, and you can kind of see that these are not right angles here. So, a square is a type of rhombus, but rhombuses in general don't have to have 90 degree corners. So the diagonals are mutually bisecting, that means they cut each other in a half, and they are perpendicular. So, and they're also lines of symmetry. So if you notice here, the diagonals, if we look at this diagonal here, that cuts this rhombus exactly in half. If we fold this over, it'll match up perfectly. And if we cut it at this diagonal, it, it cuts it in half, and this will fold over and match up perfectly. So the diagonals are lines of symmetry, the diagonals are also perpendicular where they meet. This is a 90 degree angle. And they're mutually bisecting, which means this half, here let me grab my pen, this is the same as this, and that is the same as that. So the diagonals are pretty special in rhombuses. They do a lot of cool things. One of the main things is that where they cut it, it's perpendicular and it's mutually bisecting. Okay, let's look at a couple other things. Uh, in terms of the angles, the angles next to one another are supplementary. So these two angles right here would be, this is an example, this would be like 110 and 70. Um, this is just one example. They don't, it doesn't have to be 110 and 70, but in this case they are. So these add up to 180. They're supplementary. And the angles across from one another are congruent. So these are the same as are the 70 and 70. So that's something special about the angles. So let's apply what we've learned about rhombuses and do a problem here. So I've got a few things labeled and I've got a bunch of stuff I want to find out. So I'd recommend you to, you know, draw this, pause the video, and then try this on your own. And I'll do it for you and we can kind of compare answers afterward. So I'm going to label AD as 15 and I'll do the sides in blue. So AD is 15. AC is 18. And so what I'm going to do is, I know these are cut in half. So half of 18 is 9 and 9. And then BD is 24. So this would be 12 and 12. It's just half of 24. Okay, and then let's label the angles. I'll do the angle in red. EDC. That would be EDC. This is 34 degrees. And there's so much symmetry in rhombuses, um, it's just crazy. So if this is 34, this line, the diagonal, is a line of symmetry. So that means that this is also 34. Because this angle would match up right with this angle if we folded it. And then the cool thing is, this is also a line of symmetry, this AC. And so these 34s are 34s right here as well. So 34 and 34. Okay, so we have most of the angles, actually, because we know the middle is 90 degrees. These are all right angles. And these are 34s. And we, we also know that any triangle has to add up to 180. So if we do 90 plus 34, we get 124. So this angle down here, if these three have to add up to 180, we do 180 take away 20, 124. We get 56. That means that this angle down here is also 50, or is 56. And then all of these triangles are 90 and a 34, so that means that all the other angles have to be 56 degrees. So 56, 56, again 56. Okay. So we have all the angles. Let's go through and answer these four questions then. It says ABE, well, that's 34, so 34 degrees. BAE, BAE, that would be 56. CED, CED, that's the angle right here, that's 90. And ADE, so ADE, that one's 34. All right, so let's look at the sides then. 
says AE, AE we figured out was 9, ED we figured out was 12, once again that's because it was half of 24, and then CD, well all the sides on a rhombus are the same, so this one's got to be 15, just like this one's 15, so CD would be 15. Alright, so we got one more problem to do, but this is basically summarizing the rhombus properties. So let's look at one more. This one says that FK is 6, GK is 5, and JH we need to figure out. So this is going to draw in some stuff you've probably seen in a previous class, but we have not talked about in any videos leading up to this point so far. So GK is 5. Let's label this as 5 down here. We've got FK is 6, that means that this whole thing is 6, so this is going to be, th oops, it's going to be 3 and 3. So 3 and 3, and we know this is a 90 degree angle. So if I just focus in on this triangle from G to H to K, let me try drawing this without making a big mess. If I just focus on this red triangle, I notice it's a right triangle, and I'm going to redraw it. I'm just going to draw it over here. And so this is my, let's see, H is down here at the 90 degree angle. K would be right here, this is 3. And G is up here, this is 5. So you've probably seen this before, where if we have a right triangle and we know two sides, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. That's a squared plus b squared equals c squared to figure out this missing side. So um, we're figuring out this side right here. And then once we figure that out, that'll give us jh, because these two will be the same. So in this case, we'll say a is 3. B, we don't know. That's this missing side. And then C is the hypotenuse. That's the long one, so that's 5 squared. So we get 9 plus B squared equals 25. And then if I want to solve for B squared, I would minus 9 from both sides. Subtract 9, I should say. 16, B squared is 16. And then to undo squared, we square root. And we get B equals 4. You know, square root of, if we get this, it's plus or minus 4, but we can't have a negative length. So uh, that means that this side here is 4, so that means that JH is also 4. So JH is 4 in this case. Alright, so that's rhombuses. I hope that helps you understand them a little bit better. better.